Welcome one and all to the single malt review, as today we delve into territory we have seldom trod in mm. our series to date. Unexplored grounds. Mm. This is in fact Irish whiskey, yes. which has been requested one or two times, mm. and it is a bit of a, um, considering how far we stray from the single malt um, Scotch whiskey, as the channel name might apply, mm. um, remiss, remiss that we haven't done an Irish, yeah. and this one... Possibly your most baseline Irish whiskey in the entire world, if you exclude Jameson, of course, mm -hmm. which is almost too easy in a pick. Um, this is something I picked up for what I consider to be an astronomically low amount of money. So, um, I'd say Paddy Irish whiskey, triple distilled, matured in oak in Ireland, so it's very promising, mm -hmm. um, qualifies as... As for the yep. finer details, which we're always trying to bring you here at the Single Malt Review, it is a um, previously a cork distiller's joint, now owned by Perno Ricard, as so many other mm. companies are wont to do. Previously Sazerac. Previously Sazerac, had a brief stint as the Sazerac mm. company. Um, bit of a crossover, as you might expect, between American distilling companies mm. and Irish. They share a bit of a lineage there. Um, but the main thing is this is produced out of Middleton, which is the, mm. the big boy when it comes to Irish distilling. Not a great many Irish distilling uh, places out there. Distilleries, I think, is the nomenclature for that one, if I was actually engaging my brain. Um, it's a little bit, talking about similarity with American distilling, it's a wee bit like that in Ireland. We're mm. Scotch, where we're, well, where we're not from, but where our um, tongues like to wander, um, it's pretty obviously where whiskey is coming from. You know, mm. McKellen comes from McKellen, Collie comes from Collie everyone distills its own joint, it's fine. Um, America, there's a, only a handful of bourbon distilleries and they produce this multiverse of different bland, blands. Can you tell we're on our fifth whiskey? I can. Um, Multiverse of different brands, and they're not particularly honest about where they came from. Irish whiskey shares the mould there. There is only a handful of Irish whiskey distilleries. Some of them have very, very different practices. Hmm. It is an outright lie that all Irish whiskey is triple distilled. A oh. great quantity of it is not. Hmm. Everything out of Cooley, for example, is not triple distilled, and that's, I think, the second biggest distillery huh. um, up in the country. But things out of Middleton typically are, and this is no exception. So this is a, well, you have to call it a blend. Um, hmm. There is um, pot still malt and grain whiskies, which sort of illuminates another peculiarity with Irish malt here. And we could probably do an entire episode on how Irish malt is weird mm. and different to single malt Scotch whisky. But um, I'll abbreviate here. There is a lot of different classifications of distilled whisky in Ireland. There is pot still, which is not the same as pot still in Scotland. It's not the same as single malt because due to mostly historic tax laws, which is a whole other historical discussion, um, pot-stilled Irish whiskey contains a contingent of unmalted barley and sometimes other grains, which means it's not the same as pot-stilled single malt. Mm. But malt is. So you can get single malt Irish whiskey and it will advertise itself as such. I've had one or two. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a quagmire, really. So luckily we're dipping in at the shallow end here. This is very much a blend. It will be mostly column stilled. It will be very, very young, aged, mm. I would assume, exclusively in bourbon. And, uh, yeah, out of Middleton, which is the big industrial joint there, mm. which produces a um, great many, great many Irish brands, mm. of which this is one of them. In fact, the label tells us that the blend here is pot still, grain, and malt. Oh, well, there you go. So mm. it's got a bit of everything. As for the name, Paddy, sounds like it's resorting to some rather unfortunate Irish stereotypes, but in fact this is named after a gentleman, Paddy Flaherty, who was the company salesman around the mm. early 20th century. So the whiskey was renamed in his honour because apparently his prolific uh, talents as the company representative. To be sure, to be sure. Oh, there you go. Must mm. have sold quite a lot of it. <laughs> to be honest, uh, Dave encouraged me there, so it's... Um Entirely his fault. Um, I could do worse. I could do worse. Ireland is a broad canvas of stereotypes. Mm. So, on to the whiskey at last. What do we have Ooh. in the nose? There is a hint of licorice root, almost Irish moss on the nose, which there I would not expect. There it is. And I think that mm. comes from 
wheat. Ah. Wheat and unmalted barley give you this lovely sort of aniseed mm. component. Yeah. You almost begin to see it in even wheat beer. Wheat is pretty interesting mm. as a grain in terms of the unexpected flavours. You'd expect yes. wheat to sort of taste more maybe bready and so forth, but no, distill it and you get something quite weird occasionally. Mm. And that sort of aniseed note is one of them. It's quite a robust aroma too, despite the mm. modest 40% ABV bottling strength and the lack of a particular age statement. It's sort of, there's a lot of neutral spirit. There's, mm. a, there's a fair whack of just sort of vodka in here from this sort of column distilled bland, immature spirit. But there mm. always was going to be in a blend like this. But it's not uninteresting by any means. Mm. The wood character is extremely slight. The wood they're using here is probably, as I said before, is probably almost exclusively bourbon and it mm. will be extremely well used bourbon it will be bourbon used within an inch of its life so we're mostly getting spirit character here there is not a lot of fruit that you'd normally get with scotch whiskey it is quite dry almost mineral think a fairly clean flinty sauvignon blanc if you were to Go for a wine reference. What's the palate saying to you? There are curious amounts of fruit happening there. Thinking things like guavas and mangoes. It's quite tropical. Mm. There is also a fair whack of honey on the backbone. This is actually a few episodes ago, possibly, between when this comes out. We looked at a lot of um, Tennessee whiskey, courtesy of Jack Daniels. And there was a curious sweetness to a number of those. And somewhere that's coming through here, it's a similar deal. There is honey there. It's so light. Yeah. It's almost like it's almost table sugar. Mm. It's almost like if you make simple syrup for cocktails. Yeah. Um, if you just try a teaspoon of that, that sort of sweetness with very little other adjuncts to it. Mm. But there's quite reminiscent. A bit of a tropical fruit salad attached to that, annexed on to the side of it. Mm. But some uh, some grain qualities too. A little bit of a uh, more rich maltiness. Not much though. Mm. It's very light bodied. It's quite mm. short in the palate. There's not a lot of a finish in there. Um, it's something that uh, I've discovered works really, really rather well with a couple of large ice cubes. You mm. don't want to water it down all the way, so I'd recommend a you know proper robust ice cube, which right. you can get moulds for. But this is one that will, rewards a little bit of dilution, mm. so we'll give it a wee bit just yeah. from the tipper here. Mm. Which won't cool it down, but it will give it a bit more, Oops. a bit more water to play with. Oh, yeah, there is some um, more tangy fruit coming through. A little bit of gooseberry, some grapefruit. There is gooseberry, mm. and that's really uncommon. Yeah, that's super uncommon in almost any whiskey. So. Mm. I think you'd be hard pressed to find that anywhere else in the sort of the whiskey distilling world. But the flavours here are also very, very light. That mm. there's a lot of room for slightly weirder esoteric ones to kind of pop in. Mm. There's almost a with that water, it really, really brings to bear the very, very underaged spirit that's mm. in there. And there's almost a chemical, almost a chlorine element now mm. to it. It's gone quite industrial but in a fairly clean way not not putting way it's quite uh, quite mineral mm. yeah mm. it's still a very thin very light body so the flavors are quite fleeting there's not a lot of uh, nothing that really lingers on the tongue no. no lasting finish but that said there's no burn there's mm. no real harshness in here I mm. mean Irish whiskey has the I suppose the the reputation for being the very very smooth mm option the very very smooth whiskey we to pick from all of them irish would be the one that's the most sort of approachable jameson is probably the archetype mm. there for the whiskey that sort of tastes of nothing while asking nothing of the tongue um anybody can sort of drink it you can mix it in coke and it can just you forget it's there mm -hmm. um until the morning then this i think has a wee bit more going on i would probably Jameson might cost me more, but I'd, I might pick Paddy's over mm. it. Um, not that I've done a proper review of Jameson. Probably should, <laughs> it being the um, 
defining Irish whiskey. I should whiskey. say, we have tried more Irish whiskey than we've actually reviewed on this channel. We've done the occasional video where we've tried something, but mm. either technical issues are meant that the We did, we did the Bushmills or, 10, yeah. which we should repeat. Um, that sadly died to a mm. critical sound failure, um, mm. which meant it was just not in a state to publish. But I'll come back around on that, because Bushmills yeah. 10 is... It's a very interesting whiskey uh, for many reasons, some of them even um, beyond its interest as a whiskey. Um, you, you can really get into the actual sort of politics and makeup of Northern versus Republican Ireland when you mm. taste that one. It's a, it's a very interesting whiskey and it is very, very good mm. as well. A very, very good example of Irish malt whiskey mm. too versus this more sort of standard kind. So I, we will come back around to that next time. And it's on just as a point of curiosity, I did in the past try and write a brief uh, written review of the Jamison's Cask Mates um, Irish Stout Matured Whiskey, which has been, it has spent some time maturing in a um, cask, which was originally a whiskey cask, then used to mature some Irish Stout, then returned to Jamison's to mature some whiskey in. And that was a, a curious experiment and added a surprising amount of nuance to the, um, to the occasion. So yeah, Irish Whiskey, a varied and interesting and experimental field, which is mm -hmm. always good to see. So that's, I think, probably mm. conceivably more than anybody has ever said about <laughs> Paddy Irish yeah. whiskey. Um, but I don't think it's undeserving. Mm. Um, regardless of the pittance that I paid for it, I think that's really quite a interesting enough mm. bottom shelf blend, really. Uh, scores for it. Um, it's It was never going to be a fine whiskey, mm. but considering the lower tier pantheon that it is competing in, I think its score of 76 should be mm. considered a fairly strong one, um, especially when you apply the fact that this is one of the cheapest things I've ever bought, and that's even taking Indian whiskey into account. Um, so there you go. What do you think? Yeah, I've rated a 74. It uh, delivers more than it kind of promises through its label. Looking at the name and just the general description of it and its its constituents, it's possibly it implies it's going to be a really, really bottom of a barrel, some some flavoured ethanol, really a social lubricant more than a beverage. But no, it delivers flavour, it delivers character and a little bit of nuance. And it, um, while it's not a lingering, lasting, or life changing experience, it is entirely enjoyable and very easy to drink, with just a few little quirks and surprises on the side. Well, very good. We have in the cupboard, languishing, languishing, bit mm. of a bottle of Teeling. Oh, yeah. Um, single Irish whiskey, so that will be coming up sometime in the future. Um, then we will have done one and two Irish whiskies. Mm. Um, and then um, the third one, we will do three Irish whiskies. Last Irish joke of the evening, I promise. We'll sign off. Sludge See you next time.